great. And this one's called, But the Lord Weigheth the Spirits. Okay, this is a sermon called, But the Lord Weigheth the Spirits. And this, I'm going to get my text out of Proverbs 16, uh, verses 2. And you can turn there, you can just listen. I'm just going to say it a lot of times today. It says, uh, All the ways of a man of a man are clean in his own eyes. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. Amen. 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 So we, we, I've, I've noticed that this week. I've, I've had some really interesting lessons I learned this week. The Lord, um, after 10 years of trying to learn how to walk and lean where the Lord is, is at, has been, has been a remarkable challenge, considering a lot of the examples that we have today is not... Um, is not exactly where the Lord has shown us in His Word a lot of times. And God bless all the ministries in this world for all the good they're doing. There's a lot of strength that they have that I don't know of. But um, I, I try to tend to try to listen to those men who, who turned the world upside down and brought down what we saw in Acts chapter 2 when the Spirit of God came down like a mighty rushing wind. And God's glory was so evident and, and the, the perspective was so evident where people were loving their enemies and they loved people. And it was just, everything was set in the way God was there because His presence was so evident. And so I, I love to listen to the men of the, um, men of the ages who, who really knew the Lord. And they, they learned after years of how to, how to seek the face of God and to learn how to stay in His presence. And so praise the Lord for all that's going on. I wanted to mention something really quick about a, a little bit of a news clip. I know everybody knows about ISIS and that uh, I usually don't talk about stuff like this because... I like the house of God to be talking about the answer to the problem, not the problem and, and whatnot. But I, the reason I want to this time is because I believe it's still going to give God honor because it's so powerful that when people, whatever situation they are, whatever conditioning they are, you know, I love everybody, wherever you are, even ISIS. And these people have just, they just killed people in their own nation. Four, four uh, military guys just got killed just very recently. That's why you see flags everywhere because everybody's trying to say, we are standing for America and we're not letting our nation turn into something else and whatever. But what's so powerful about what happened is that uh, there was a gentleman who was a Christian getting killed like they always get killed. They're getting killed in the last 60 years more than in the history of the whole whole New Testament church. More people have been murdered in the, for the name of Jesus in the last 60 years, bar none, like 10 times as much Christians. But this Christian was holding up a Bible and he says, I know you're going to shoot me. And I just want you to know that this is my Bible and I want you to have it. And so he, sure enough, he shot him full of holes and then he gave the Bible. Or he, of course, he can give the Bible. He takes the Bible and he actually read it a little bit. And then um, the guy goes to sleep and he starts dreaming dreams about a man clothed and robed in white and speaking to him saying, why are you killing my people? And, this, and the radical thing was is that he wasn't the only one having those dreams. There's a lot of people in the ISIS group who've been getting dreams from God saying, why are you killing my people? Amen. So that's the only reason I would bring up the thing because I know that the Lord can save to the uttermost. We saw him do that to Paul, or Saul, conversion to Paul on the road to Damascus of all places. And it was, it was exactly the same thing. He was like that. The Pharisees were like ISIS. They were killing Christians. Christians have always been like on the menu for killing because people just don't understand it. In their own mind, they think they're right. Everybody's conditioned. You know, Hitler thought he was right. Every group of people always says, I'm right in my own eyes. But the Lord weighs the spirits, you know. Anytime, even the Pharisees, they knew the word, they knew the letter really, really well. But when it came right down to what it really meant, they didn't even recognize Jesus right in front of them. And he was fulfilling all the prophecies that, the, that they knew, but they just didn't see it under the right light because the Lord weighs it under a very, very different light in, a, in the invisible. Our invisible God is weighing things in an invisible way for us to be able to see very, very differently. But I really want to let the, I want the Lord to take over this thing because I know I can't preach it. And I want, I want the Lord to be able to, to do what he needs to do in this place. So I'm going to pray real quick for the word. Father, we thank you for the word, and I pray that your spirit, Lord God, would be the unction beneath the whole thing, to touch us in a way that we didn't know we needed to be touched at, Lord God, to set us free in places we didn't even know we were bound, Lord God. I pray that eyes would be open and the eyes of our understanding would be open, that a, and a, and a holy awakening would happen tonight by your word, Lord God. And I know that you can use a donkey, and I know you can, you can use anybody, and you take the, the people who've messed up the most to do stuff that... That way they'll never glory in your presence, Lord God. And 
That's, that's what's happening right now, Lord God. I, I thank you for your power, Lord God. I can't preach, but I know that you can, Lord God. So strengthen, strengthen this moment so the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened to know what is the rock of ages that we're, that we're to be learning to stand upon in the everlasting arms of God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. It's kind of like um, if, you, if you see a car and it's broken down and you can see the tires are flat and the windows are broken or something like that, it's pretty easy. The exterior of the thing is really, really easy to see. Anybody can see. They don't have to be a mechanic to know. It's not going to work because something's drastically wrong. It's very, very visible, you know, and that's something that anybody can. But people who are really trained to realize going under the hood, there's all kinds of other things that get wrong. And in the last 20 or so years, cars have become very, very computerized and where they need different types of um, gear in order to connect and find out where is the issue. Because it's not like you can just, if you learn how to fix cars 40 years ago, you're not going to know how to fix a 2014 or 15 car because they're computerized. It's a whole other ball game. And so they have different types of gear to learn how to connect and to find out where the issue is, you know. And there's a lot of people who will walk in ways they thought was right in their own eyes, but according to the Lord, it's out of His parameters and they're inviting all kinds of things in their spirit that like something just doesn't sit right. I, I don't feel right anymore. And they're like, well, I don't know where the issue is. And so they run, mankind will run to all kinds of things like I did. I ran into every single vice under the sun, it seems like, and trying to figure out how to survive. How do I want to make myself feel right? I want to feel like I'm accomplishing something. I want to feel like I'm enjoying my life and whatnot. And I, I ran through all those things. I, I did. I, you know, 10 years ago, I finally realized this is no way, the way I want to go. And then the Lord revealed himself to me and let me know what real life is really all about. And I counted all my victories, all my success in music and everything I've ever done, I counted it all as a complete waste of time. In fact, God proved it to me so I had to clean up a lot of messes for years in order to get out of the ditches and stuff like that to, to prove that I count that as a, as a dung heap and a, as a law, all but lost that I may have win Christ. But there are some, there's things deeper in us that God wants to show us by the Spirit. And I'm going to look at a few different scriptures to show us kind of what the Word has to say when it comes to spiritual matters. Um, under the hood is very different. It's much more complicated. It's much more harder to see. Something that takes a little bit more of the proper gear. But the Lord knows how to get there. And by His Spirit, He lets us know where the issue is. He's done that to me several times to let me know that God... Is there something I can grow in? Is there some place that I'm missing it? And then he goes and shows me something, and I'm just like, oh, man, I didn't want to hear that, you know? <laughs> All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord way of the spirits in Proverbs 16, 2. In Proverbs 20, verse uh, 27, um, it says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching out the inward parts of the belly. That's what the King James says. Is it searches out the inward parts of the belly. It's, uh, that's where the spirit man actually does dwell. This is where, this is where the, the rock that we're to stand on actually happens when we learn to look at the word. Because the Bible says that the word is spirit and it blesses us in a spiritual way. And it causes the Lord to be able to start to show his view us on us in a really, really deep kind of a way. Far deeper into like a computer like that you know, compared to just an outward thing. Like you scrape your elbow, pretty easy to see. If something's wrong, you can tell. You put a band-aid on it and put something on it and make it go away. And, you know, those, those exterior things are very easy to ex observe, but when it comes to the deeper matters of the heart, you know, the Bible describes it as the, uh, the being of a man or the heart of a man or the spirit of a man, and it's in the belly, right down into the spirit of man. And this week I learned that the Lord was letting me, not letting me play games with him, basically. He's just like... You know, uh, I think it was Monday after work, and I was having such a good time with, you know, going out into the streets and sharing the word and whatnot, and I felt him leading me to go to Vancouver, and I'm all the way from Twalas and Sherwood after work, off a late, late night. I'm like, Lord, I'm not going to be able to get there till about 8 p.m. tonight, and he didn't change his mind, and because it took me so long just to cross through downtown, I'm like, I'll just go downtown and bring my new banner out there and declare the glory, and I'm telling you, his word wasn't sent there for me that day, and it was so dead. It was so off, and people weren't responding right, and people were kind of hashing me, and it just didn't feel like that. You can't feel that ebb and flow, you know? 
how sometimes you're working with people and there's you're, it's all awkward because you don't really understand each other. And then same when you're getting to know the Lord. It's awkward. You're not developing that ebb and flow so you can learn how to really move together. He's trying to teach me, stop acting like you don't hear me. Stop acting like you don't know. My word was sent to Vancouver. If you would have went there, you would have seen my power. And the next day, he dealt with me so severely. It was not even, I felt like my soul got run over with a train. And I was just like, oh my goodness. And I had to sit there and listen to these, I had to, you know, I listened to my own old, old sermons. I made them, I recorded my old TikToks in order to preserve my own soul if I ever felt wrong. Because like, I feel spiritually, my sight is going off. I feel like I'm losing my strength, God. And so I record things. I feel like I'm strong. And I was using that. And the next day, I tried to do the same thing, and it wasn't where he was at. And it's like, the Lord's like saying, I want you to seek me. I don't want you to just sit there and put on a sermon and think that's going to save you every time. You can't just pray it away all the time. You can't just sing a song all the time. You can't just fellowship and expect that that thing's going to be fixed. I'm weighing something far deeper than that, and I want you to seek me. I'm worthy to be sought, says the Lord. I want you to press into me and, and look until you actually find me. And somewhere between a halle and a luya, all of a sudden, there it is. I'm back on track again. And the Lord let me know. It's like, okay. You want to go do your drug test over here and way off track and driving around and thinking, what am I going to do now? I'm way over here to try to fill my time. And then he leads me back downtown. I'm like, I don't want to go back downtown. It didn't feel right before, Lord. And I argued with him. He didn't change his mind. So I went down there and it was just like, bam, bam. Everybody's taking tracks. Everybody's all, praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everything was moving smoothly and things that didn't happen, happened. It was so powerful. I'm like, man, the walls of Jericho will come down when we go where he wants us to go. Because it's not by our strength. We can't just use our gifting. Lord, I'm going to do what, I'm gonna do something for you, Lord. I'm going to stand for you. He's like, you can't stand for me. You just go where I tell you to go. And that's standing for me. Okay, I'm alive and I'm still speaking every moment by moment, every second by second, says the Lord. And that's where the spirit of the, of the living God is really at. And so there's this gentleman. A lot of times I get picked on and challenged by people that are homeless and people that don't have a whole lot going on kind of normal, but once in a while, people who actually have their stuff together, he actually challenged me. He says, what is it you're passing out? And I said, these are testimony tracks. And I said, these are stories of people's actual stories about how they came to know the Lord. And in here, it feels like, praise the Lord, that feels powerful. Out there, it doesn't feel like that. Over there, it's just like so much resistance and so much unbelief. It doesn't feel as impacting. So it takes a while to develop. And he was he was on the clock. He was working. He says, I'm stopping to talk to you. I want to hear what you have to say and challenge you and to, to find out what you what you think about whatever. And we had a nice talk. And he, he admitted that he wants to live in sin. And I said, I said, okay, that's your decision. But just, just to think about it this way. What if these people that you want to hang out with because you don't want to be married, you want to continue on like this. What if that was your daughter? Does that be all right with you? Is that, is that okay if other men treat your daughter like the way you treat other women? And he says, well, if, if, if they consented to it, I'm like, you don't let a woman who's in, not in her right mind make decisions like that. You don't take advantage of someone because their head's in left field. You, you, you step up to the standard and you help people get onto the right thing so they won't get taken advantage, especially by yourself. I said, that's wrong. God is holy and we are the problem. God made man upright and we were the one that made the mess. Don't blame God. He's not the bad guy. And he sent me this video. He says, what's your phone number? I'm going to text you a video. So I watched it. He was a really famous atheist. And it was an interview for just two minutes, and it was horrific, listening to the language of this man just blaspheming God. And he, and he says to the, the old man, asked the, this famous atheist, I'm not going to tell you his name, I, I didn't even know about him until just now. And he says, if there is a God, what will you say to him when you see him in heaven? And he says, well, if there is a God, I would say to the Lord, bone cancer, child abuse, disease, suffering. Why? He's like, acts like he's like, this Lord, this God that is displayed in the Bible is so arrogant and so terrible to not help people and not protect people. And I'm like, look, he said, and I said, I said, I saw your video and he says, what did you think? And I said, this is what I think. I said, the same thing as a woman who's married and she's asking a blessing from her husband while she's cheating on her husband. Can you please buy me a new dress? I'm going to go on a date with a guy that I like more than you. That's what that's all about. Of course you're going to suffer out there because that person doesn't love you. The man that gave you the ring and paid your way and covers you and shelters you and protects you, that is the man that loves you. And over here you got this guy who doesn't care about the rules. He wants to walk like the jungle man, wants to act like an ape and live like an animal. And 
then you're going to tell me that that's where you want to go? That's what we do. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We, we, don't, we, were, we, were left, we left the safety of God's His true path that we all do know. Instead of coming back and saying, I'm sorry, we're saying, I'm over here walking in darkness and being beat up by the enemy and wondering why it is. Because death comes by sin. And we've all sinned. And until you come back, you can't expect the blessing of the Lord. You, you get whatever you get in the jungle. Amen? You get whatever you get in the jungle. You want to live however you want to, take the, pen, take the payment with it. It comes with it. Don't blame God because He's over here. You're over here saying, God, help me while I'm disobeying you and nodding my head to you and turning my back to you is what the Lord says. Don't expect it to happen. It didn't even happen for His chosen people at any time. Any time. They're in trouble. Like, tell Jeremiah, why is God doing this to us? Because you guys want to bow down before idols in a nation that is not your own. Now you're going to be held captive in a land that is not your own. Because I want you to know, this is how it is. I am worthy to be honored and obeyed. And I will bless those that will walk in my ways. And I will make a really big trouble for those that don't. So don't blame God for the things that are going wrong. We asked the devil to do that. We asked him to come in here and to hurt us bad. Amen? Look at this other spiritual scripture here. Kind of an inner moral issue when it comes to um, some, of the, some of the inner issues. There's the scriptures that are kind of focus on inner moral issues. Um, there's the ones that talk about the inner beauty and just the focus of just plain old the inner man versus the spirit of the living God. Um, it's in uh, Matthew 23 where he says, um, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. And he's going off for one whole chapter. If you ever know where you're going to find out why Pharisees are so bad, just read Matthew 23 and you'll see. Look at number 25 and a few, chart, a few verses right there. And you'll see what happens when you get off track, even knowing the letters of the Bible, okay? Jesus says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you make clean the outside of the cup and, and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Amen. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but within full of dead man's bones. Amen. That's the inward part that they're not even caring about. You leave it unclean and of all uncleanness. And yet people still, wow, you know, and even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Okay, it keeps going. But you'll see earlier on in verse 5, it says, But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They, don't, they aren't looking for God to approval. They're not looking for approval from God. They're looking for the approval of men. So the emphasis changed from the fear of God to the fear and the approval of men. And so their whole, they have the same Bible, but the emphasis is so off. And so God is going to show us in the Word how do we keep the emphasis in a place that is actually sound and safe. Amen? So let's look at this one in um, Ephesians 3.16. You don't have to turn there if you don't want to. You can. Ephesians 3.16, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with the might by His Spirit in the inner man. Amen. Ephesians, he wants to talk about his spirit in the inner man, where we can have that thing that happens, where we fear the Lord and care what he thinks. Eventually, that thing's going to happen, the might that comes from God. 2 Corinthians 3, uh, verse 16 says, Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, we are changed. We have a whole new image. We have a whole new being, our whole new heart. Like in um, Ezekiel, it says, A new heart will I give you, a heart of flesh and not a heart of stone. So there's an inner working thing that happens to you, gives you a whole new way of looking at things. I want to give you a heart that cares about being dealt with by God. This, this equipment of the Holy Spirit dealing with you and shining light to show you where is the issue. Lord, I missed it on that one. I see what you're saying, you know. But we walk where the Lord's power is. His Spirit's going to make it very, very evident. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Amen. 
so we can relinquish our own strength and our own giftings, which I've heard people do that, and I see I don't see any devotion to God whatsoever in their life. Oh yeah, brother, I was I sang a song in front of five thousand people at this giant church. I'm like, yeah, and you got plans on living like the devil, so who cares? You're not doing it for the approval of God, you're doing it for the approval of man. Pharisee. I don't have all those legalistic issues. Doesn't matter. There's a lot of nutrients to the heart of the Pharisee, and you've got one of them. You care about what men think. That's the whole point of the whole thing. Amen. And then the next one, um, we're going to look at this uh, 2 Corinthians 4.16. Did I just say that? No. 4.16. Thank you. For which, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, but yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us for far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. Amen. And so a lot of times when you're looking back at all the giants of old, some of the men of God that God used, and like we're like, man, how did you do those things? How could you turn so much of the power of the Holy Spirit to actually bring people to where they look like New Testament Christians? And it's like they lived in eternity. Their minds were not consumed with the cares of this world. The Bible says that no man warreth, spiritually speaking. No man is warring if they're entangled with the things of this life. You know, if these things are consumed to you, it's an evidence that spiritually speaking, something is starting to lose. You're starting to let the dials go the wrong direction. Now, I care about the things of this world. Those, those that really war in the spirit, those things automatically grow strangely dim. Amen. Like you, you see the light of the glory of this glorious gospel, the face of Jesus Christ, the image of God, the glory of God, and the things of this world, they don't look good anymore. Amen. It's part of the things that we check ourselves. Are we in the faith? There's eight different things you see in the book of 1 John, and one of them, love not the world, amen, neither the things thereof, because it, it will just, it will, it doesn't go together. Brother Robbie, why are you getting on me like that? Those aren't, there's nothing wrong with that. I know there's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't match the treasures of heaven. It doesn't match those, the things that are for eternity. Those men that did right, they didn't live an opulent life. They lived a very hard suffering life. The people we look back and say, those men were powerful. They did so much for God, man. But then you ask people, what is it that you want? Well, I want a comfortable relationship. I want a nice house, lots of money. I want to have a lot of fun. It's like these people that you idolize and say they're heroes, they didn't live like that at all. They lived very sacrificial lives to get through it. They wanted to live for something. They wanted to make a difference for something that meant something, amen? They lived for something that it cost them, the, the cares of this world. Inner beauty, 1 Peter 3. I'm um, talking about women's inner beauty, and that's not the only thing it's talking about because it still goes with men as well in the body of Christ at large, whose adorning let it uh, not be outward adorning of the plating of hair and the wearing of gold or the putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, amen, and, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of the Lord, which is in the sight of God of great price. So a woman that will decorate herself with meekness and quiet spirit, the Lord says, this is pleasing in my sight. I like that. That's what's pleasing to the Lord. Song of Solomon 4, 7 says, Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. Amen. And I believe, like a lot of theologians do, there are a lot of theologians will debate on here. I'm not going to get into the theology of the whole thing. Song of Solomon, I believe it is a portrait of Christ and his church. So, if this is a portrait of Christ in his church, then Christ could say to his bride, us, thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. Amen. And when we come to Jesus, that's exactly what does happen. He takes away all sin, and you are totally clean. And then we are going through a sanctification process where we're learning how to walk in the newness of life. Amen. So there is no spot in thee. And now we want you to learn how to walk in that thing that was birthed by the Spirit. And I want you to continue in the Spirit. Abide in Christ and my words abide in you. Amen. So and then Proverbs 31, 30 says, Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that is but feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. The Lord that cares, I fear God. I don't want to get on his bad side. I want my spirit to, I want the flames to burn hot. If I have ease, please, then my flames will burn hot in the inward man. People might not think I look good on the outside because I'm not keeping up with the trends, but I'm keeping up with the trends of eternity. Amen. And then here comes 1 Samuel 16, 7. This is something that a lot of people fall, fall for. Talking about King Saul before he was anointed king. 
and uh, the Lord's telling him, but the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not at his countenance, or at the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for the man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Amen. So God's looking at the condition of your heart. What is it that you care about? Because so a man thinketh, so is he. Amen. What a man is after, what, he's, what, he's, what his goals are, that's the man. You don't find him saying, I want to seek the Lord, that's why I'm going to go to these strange CD clubs and things like that. I'm looking for God there. I, I doubt it. I doubt it. You know who he is. You know who a man or mankind is by where they are aiming. What do they talk about? So he is. Amen. So a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. This is the really, really powerful one. So if you get nothing today and get this one, this is holy and powerful. Proverbs 3, 15. Woman of virtue, she is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Amen. <laughs> Meaning anything you think is so great, God's like, don't you even dare compare them to this woman who fears me and wants to decorate herself with meekness and a quiet spirit. This is pleasing to me. Don't you dare compare anything to it because that is what I'm talking about, says the Lord. 2 Corinthians 4.16, we saw that he, re he renews us day by day in the inward man. 1 Corinthians 13, we talked about it last time, but it's under a whole other channel because there's just so many ways you can look at the Word of God. And, um, verse 4 says, Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, and thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there should be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Amen. So these people, their emphasis was starting to slip away from the spiritual truth before the Lord and started to become looking at the fruit thereof, kind of like what happened to our dear Elijah. Amen. And he goes and pulls down fire from heaven and burns 550 people. And the man burns down fire again and it's all about this fire and all this power. And the prophets of Baal, he faces them and all these hundreds of prophets of Baal go running. And he's just like, man, I am powerful. And all of a sudden the Lord does something merciful to him. He pulls his anointing away. It's so what had to have happened because all of a sudden there's some nagging woman that's not even near him and he's running for his life. And there's nothing even to be scared of. But he, God's just saying, I want you to know where my anointing really does come from. So listen really carefully, Brother Elijah. He's in the side of a cleft of the rock. He's looking at all this fire. He's looking at all the storm. He's looking at the, the avalanche or whatever's going on. And the Lord says, and I'm not there. I'm not there. And I'm not there. You're the fireman, yes. But I'm not in the fire. I mean the still, small voice. So that is where the, the beginning of the strength of God comes from, that still, small voice. I want you to remember how delicate I am, says the Holy Spirit. I want you to remember how I can blow through your being. And I want you to know what means more, that you can feel the love of the Father by the power of the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is liberty. The Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty supernatural liberty to live a life that makes no sense to them that are emphasizing things else. That's why there's so many different denominations, there's so many different groups, because they don't emphasize the life of the Spirit. They don't fear God. They don't love their enemies. God wants you to do a certain thing to enter into His rest. There's a certain way we, we can open up spirits. There's so many different ways of doing it in spiritism and all this stuff. I don't even want to get into it, but that's how they do things. That's how people can take their bare hand and break five bricks in half because they learn how to tap into the spirit called key, and they break it. And there's all kinds of other different religions, and they can do things in the spirit, but bless the Lord on oh my soul, it's not of the Lord. Okay, we need to be discerners of spirits. The closer we get to the reality of the Christ of the Bible and let his true life burn within our hearts, we'll say that is not the Lord. I don't care if you named it Jesus, it's not my God. Okay, I know better. Well, it says Jesus right here. I know letters, but I know the spirits. Man always wants to say, I'm fine right where I'm at, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Amen. It's very, very different. I'm going to close with one verse right here. Psalms 34, verse 3 through 8. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Amen. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. 
This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. He delivers you from all your fears. Anybody who's ever known genuine fellowship with the Holy Spirit, anybody in this planet that's ever known genuine fellowship with the Holy Spirit, when his spirit starts to go away, your heart starts to become filled with fear. And you start to grab hold of all the things that used to make you strong. Well, I can promote myself looking pretty, looking buff, and th looking like this, and I can look like the authority of that and the other. And all that I can do because I live for the pleasure of the eyes of all mankind. My neighbor's got a nicer house. i got to make my house look nicer because I care what people think. It's not about the inward life anymore. Something's drifting away. But it's saying right here, Deliver me from all my fears. The fear of God is going to deliver you from the fear of man. The opinions of God will deliver you from the opinions of man. When that becomes real, the Bible says the righteous are bold like lions. Amen. You're bold because you're in love, just like an old St. Bernard. That dog was named after a St. Bernard. There's a couple of Bernard of Cluny and Bernard of Clairvaux. And he was so in love with Jesus that kings feared making decisions without his approval. They said, oh, we're going to go ahead and wipe out West Germany. And then he comes walking in there, just this lowly prophet. And he walks in there and looks to the king. And they're like, oh, uh, St. Bernard, uh, we weren't really going to go to war. And friend, he just talks to people so gently because he just knows the gentle leading of the Holy Spirit. Friend, don't do this. He doesn't have to say anything. Just walk in there and the presence of God is so evident that people just know what God's view is because he's so lives such a life of deep prayer. Amen. So this is the key right here is in the spirit here. Spirit man. I know I missed a bunch of verses, but that's okay. And we're going to leave it right there. I want our spirits to tap into God's got a way for us to take up our cross and to deny ourselves and let our strength come from him and not our own flesh. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the blessing of the Holy Spirit that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. We thank you for building your church, Lord God. Lord, I pray that seducing spirits would be bound, and every devil would be bound, and that your church would be free. I pray that the blood of Jesus over everyone that wants to live for your glory. I pray for a high hedge of protection around anybody who wants to get real with you. And anyone who means business with you, Lord God, I want them to know that there's not enough devils in hell to stop them from touching your love. I pray that's a declaration that reaches the housetops, Lord God. Let the world know that the Redeemer is still calling. He's still walking in the garden and calling back into Eden, Lord God. That we can have fellowship with the Father all over again. I pray that your, that your mercies would be new for all those that need it. We learn to fear you and love our enemies if we have any. Pray that your name get honor and glory in this side of town, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I'm going to go ahead and close with the benediction. Here's one scripture from uh, the book of Jude. There's a couple nice benedictions at the end of uh, some of the books here. It'll behave, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have my own face. Sorry about that. She just makes it look easy. No, you did good. It's all right. Fast. Technology. It's my hero, though. It's funny when you, I like learn from my hero. And you, oh, here we go. And he always ends with this at the end of his service. I thought that was pretty cool. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Should we end with that song? Lord, prepare me. If you know it, we'll just sing it though. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary.